Lowell Shepard here on board setting vessel Wahine, my Gipsy 402, currently in Okinawa. I want to share with you the top four reasons why I love cruising in Japan. One of them may really surprise you. I've been living on my sailboat now for five years and have been cruising for nearly three years around Japan and I've come to really enjoy it. I left Tokyo Bay uh, three years ago uh, with the express purpose of having a stress test sail to Okinawa to see if my boat and I were ready to cross the Pacific on our own. The stress test worked in that it proved to me that the boat and I were not ready. So we've been cruising around Japan ever since. So I want to share with you these four things I love about cruising in Japan and four things that you may find helpful if you're considering cruising in Japan. My four things I love are beyond the usual things that people talk about when they come to Japan. Uh, you can go to other YouTube channels and videos where people will wax much more eloquent than me about the food, about the history, about the culture and even the topography. Uh, I want to share with you from a s cruising point of view and a sailing point of view. thing that's perhaps one of the two unusual things that you may not expect me to say is that I never lock my boat. It's never been locked once in the five years I've lived on her and in the three years I've been cruising. I've been in 70 ports. Sometimes I leave her, often leave her for hours, sometimes days, even a few times weeks, largely unattended. Some of those times I had been in marina, so there had been uh, security going around the perimeter, etc. But I've never locked my boat. And that's a wonderful thing about Japan. You know, those of us who live in Japan have our only in Japan stories. Uh, my favorite one is actually from when I used to bicycle. First started again the cycling. I cycled from our home uh, 70 kilometers into the mountains, then back again. And, and before I turned around, I found this little remote ice cream bar by a river. I bought an ice cream determined next summer I would bring my family back. Next summer we went back, drove out, got some ice cream, went out and sat by the river to eat it. And then the lady came out with a stack of coins uh, wrapped in Kleenex. She said, were you here last summer on a bicycle? I said, yes, I was. She said, you forgot your change. Only in Japan. Only in Japan, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong and tell me if you've had an experience elsewhere but can you leave a boat unlocked for five years over 70 ports? So that's the first thing I would love Japan, is it's safe. The thing I love about, about Japan is the stunning coastline. Now I've seen large chunks of this coastline from a bicycle saddle before, but to see it from the sea, you realize how rugged Japan is in places. Of course, there's the urban areas and those urban areas have nice places to more and marinas as well. Nagasaki is probably my favorite uh, moorage. The coastline is absolutely stunning. Nearly 7,000 islands in Japan, some of them uninhabited, and there's always surprises. You see granite uh, rock faces, you see steep mountains, you see rolling plains, you even see mountain tops where wild horses roam. Uh, unbelievable. We're never bored sailing the coastline of Japan. Number three, to moor your boat is very cheap, if not free. As I said, I've been to 70 ports so far, uh, sometimes marinas, 
sometimes fishing harbors, most of the time fishing harbors, and sometimes uh, fish arenas. Many times um, all those places are under the umbrella of an organization called Umino Eki or sea stations, not all of them. Uh, and there, then they have to meet certain requirements that usually then are welcoming of yachts. You can cruise Japan fairly cheaply. Uh, many fishing harbors, it's totally free. Some places you have to register with the port authority and they charge by the ton. I'm an eight ton boat, so it's usually less than 10 yen a day. Uh, with marinas, it can range from 2,000 to 5,000 a day and the facilities are proportionate. I, I'm told that that's still a lot cheaper than in America, for example. Uh, to be able to moor 30 or 40 dollars a day is, is fairly cheap. Uh, many of the places where you do moor, uh, it's only walls, so you have to be prepared for that. I'll talk about that in my four tips for those who want to cruise in Japan. Uh, but I love Japan because there's so many options to moor. The one thing to say is that anchoring isn't as popular here. Uh, people do do it, but often there's a steep drop off. And if you, if you uh, anchor in a fishing harbor or port, oftentimes the seabed is full of fishing debris. And I've been caught up more than once in lines and stuff uh, and gunk at the bottom uh, on the seabed. So um, that's the third thing I like about it is you can cruise fairly cheaply. And the fourth reason is, and this is going to surprise some, and maybe it's just to do with my uh, unusual circumstance, but I love the Japanese Coast Guard. Some sailors get irritated in Japan when the Coast Guard come and inspect them, particularly when the Coast Guards overreach what they should be doing, checking your papers and checking your legal, uh, your legalities. I'm a curiosity because when they look at me through their binoculars, they see that my home port is Tokyo, but I'm a foreign skipper. And so at certain places that's aroused, you know, curiosity bordering on suspicion that something fishy was going on. Other times I've been used for training, but because a lot of my cruising has been solo, uh, I've always enjoyed the company. I'll tell you this one story. I was rounding the southwestern tip of Shikoku and I was an hour from port in Toza Shimizu. And there uh, I saw the Coast Guard ship come out of port and I saw it stop, then turn its nose towards me and comes came towards me. And I realized, yeah, I was gonna be inspected. Next two or three hours bumping around in a rolling sea on my tracker, you could see how we were drifting with tidal currents and uh, you know, everything was fine. I had to pass papers to them. They, I had them phone Captain Hiro, my buddy in Tokyo, who always uh, interfaced with the Coast Guard when I needed them to. Usually it was him, sometimes uh, Kirk Patterson as well. And um, uh, they let me go. Well, three hours later, after I had settled in at port, I, I got the boat tidied up, all the lines. I went out looking to have supper walked into this little izakaya, as they call it in Japan, an eating, drinking establishment. Uh, there were five stools, two were occupied. One of the men on the stools jumped up suddenly, his cheeks were red from probably drinking beer. He put his arms around me and he was from the Coast Guard. He knew all about me. He knew what had happened. He suddenly dashed out of the bar uh, to appear 10 minutes later with a Coast Guard t-shirt and said, next time we stop you, wear this. And then he took me sightseeing for three days in this little uh, yellow plate at 880 cc car. So, you know, I've, I've actually enjoyed and appreciated every encounter with the Coast Guard. They're doing their job. It breaks up the monotony of my day and I don't mind them overreaching. And I just love Japan because of those encounters with the Japanese Coast Guard. Now, let me share with you of four things that I think you may find helpful knowing if you're considering cruising in Japan. And the first one is the big one, and that's understanding the regulations that govern Japanese vessels uh, versus the regulations that govern foreign vessels. So if you're a foreign skipper coming in with a foreign flag boat, the rules that apply to you will be different than the rules apply to me because I have a Japanese flagged boat and therefore I'm under certain regulations. Now, if you're a foreign registered vessel coming in, you do have some hoops to jump through as well, which includes obviously immigration and checking in and now uh, getting a special customs form that allows you to enter 
basically any port in Japan. The laws changed a few years ago, making it easier for foreign vessels to come in and get this special certificate that allows you to go any port in Japan. And foreign registered vessels uh, are envied because you have so much freedom and you're not subject to Japanese regulations for Japanese registered vessels. The agency that governs uh, Japanese vessels is called the JCI, Japan Craft Inspection. And when I bought my boat, I'd already got my boat operator's license, which you need in Japan if you're going to operate a Japanese vessel with uh, more than a two horsepower engine on it. And uh, good morning. And so if you're going to have a Japanese vessel with an engine in it more than two horsepower, you need to have a boat operator's license. Uh, there's class one and class two. Class two is the easier one. It's about a 70 minute exam, a water test as well for boat handling. And uh, that allows you up to 20 ton boat and up to five miles offshore. Class one is has an extra set of, I think it's 16 questions, which a lot has to do with navigation and diesel engines. And uh, then you're allowed beyond five miles offshore. I got my license through the Tokyo Sail and Power Squadron. I was able to take the course in English at a fraction of the cost. And because of arrangements they had made, I was able to take the exam in English as well. And I passed and I naively thought that now with my boat operator's license, I could buy a boat and sail off into the sunset. Wrong. I was dead wrong. Because when I bought this boat, thinking that, I then discovered that she was restricted. And the JCI has restrictions for freshwater boats, as well as those on the ocean. And putting it in very simple terms, my boat was registered Gentai Enkai, uh, which was, I was allowed only up to five miles offshore, the boat was, uh, and uh, out of Tokyo Bay, there was kind of like a V shape. I could go a bit further to a particular island, but basically not beyond. So I realized to realize my dream of sailing out in the ocean, I had to change this. And uh, I eventually got Enkai, which allows me up to 20 miles. Three times I've got temporary Kinkai, which allows me basically anywhere in the Eastern Pacific and Southeast Asia. And then there's Enyo, which is worldwide. Well, with each step up, it costs money. It costs money both for the inspection fee, usually out of water, although for temporary, you don't need out of water, uh, but also for the equipment that you need. There's a different list of equipment for each level. And the equipment is expensive because I must have the Sakura stamp on it. And usually that's two or three times the price you would pay for that piece of equipment. Otherwise, my life raft, for example, is certified Kinkai because three times I got temporary Kinkai. And because it was Kinkai, um, it, it cost me probably two or three times more than what I would have paid in the States for a life wrap with all the same specifications, same standard and same quality. So first thing I recommend you do is do your research, whether you're a foreign vessel or a Japanese registered vessel, know the regulations. And uh, you can contact the Tokyo Sail Power Squadron uh, if you are in Japan. If you're a cruiser coming in, I recommend Compira Consulting. And that's Kirk Patterson, and he's kind of the uh, uh, leading expert for incoming cruisers. You, and join the uh, Facebook group called Sailing in Japan. You can ask your questions there. The second thing, and more practically and quickly, is that if you're cruising in Japan, because a lot of your time is going to be in fishing harbors against walls where there's cavities and where there's tidal changes, then you need big planks. And basically, I can put them in front of my fenders. Between the fender and the dock, you can bridge the cavities and keep your boat safe. And then secondly, a ladder, because in some places like the Seto Inland Sea, the Seto Naikai, the tidal range can be up to four meters. So you want to be able to get on and off your boat. And so, uh, and the tip is always have the ladder on the side you're on. If you're on the boat, have it on the boat. And if you're on land, have it on land. Uh, common sense, but uh, for me, things have to be 
be dummy proof. So uh, that's a tip. And also, of course, make sure you have plenty of line that you can uh, cope with the adjustment of your, um, as the tide goes up and down. And in those places, you don't want to leave your boat more than a few hours and really keep an eye on uh, your tidal charts, uh, particularly during spring tide. The third thing is uh, remember about anchoring. Uh, anchoring isn't as popular here. Uh, uh, I stated that reason already. A lot of debris on the on the seabed in bays and ports, also with the steep drop off. So uh, don't assume you can anchor anywhere. And the fourth thing, just to let you know, is that the sailing community in Japan is is relatively small compared to other places. It's evidenced by these beautiful bays and coves where you can go in and you're the only one there. If, I assume if it was the Med or the Caribbean, uh, it would be chocker block with other cruisers and day sailors, etc. So uh, that's the good news is you probably have a lot of seclusion and privacy. Um, and, and also because uh, there's not many, people really tend to help each other. I think that's true of the sailing community worldwide anyways, but uh, also true here in Japan. But the downside is that um, marine shop supplies are harder to to get to and they're not as large and extensive. There are companies online you can order from Amazon. Uh, the good news he is here is you can use Amazon to deliver to your local marina or fishing port or a local address. And usually it can be next day delivery, sometimes same day delivery. I've just ordered some uh, sealant as I'm repairing my fuel tank it said next day delivery and free delivery at that so those are my tips and those are my favorite things about being in Japan uh, please subscribe please like absolutely loving living on the water and now spending the winter in Okinawa in a couple weeks I'm sailing to Zamami and really Japan is a great cruising ground check it out we'll see you remember it's never too late Bye -bye. Place, a new home for a while, let me feel alive. Nothing to hold me back, take my time, just enjoy the ride. A new man passing by, life is good, best I've ever felt. Get me up, so new, so I can find myself. Reach out, reach out, reach out